I'm Avia Sesterone and this is Bim's Bites. Today we'll be biting into sargasm seaweed. So what is sargasm seaweed? Sargasm is a type of brown algae that typically floats on the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. Unlike other seaweeds that are anchored to the bottom of the ocean floor, sargasm is carried by the ocean's currents and winds. Sargasm seaweed has leafy appendages and oxygen-filled nomatsis that helps it float. It keeps it buoyant. So if you look at the image on the left side, you can see the green branches and you can see the oxygen-filled um, gas bubbles um, that keeps it floating on the surface of the Atlantic. As you can see behind it, you can see sargasm and it just forms in mats and it just all floats together. So it'll just be a big mat full of seaweed. Um, at the bottom left, you can also see the scientific names, its division, class, order, family, and genius. So in these sargasm mats, it's actually beneficial. So sargasm is home to various creatures, baby sea turtles, fish, shrimp, crabs, and even plankton. It would all just live on that sargasm map, mat just floating through the Atlantic Ocean. And it allows those organisms shelter, protection, allows them to breed there, and it serves as a food source. You know, it helps them camouflage, and it's just really beneficial for them. And that's um, what really lives in the sargasm. But sargasm on the shore, it's different than sargasm out in the water. Um, so after years of floating, sargasm mats eventually lose their buoyancy and will sink to the bottom of the ocean. Once it sinks down there, those other marine creatures would eat it. But when sargasm washes up on the shorelines, it serves as a prote protective barrier and it helps prevent erosion on coastal communities. But when there's large amount of sargasm on those shorelines, it can cause problems for both humans and animals. Um, first thing, it would work as an obstacle course for baby sea turtle hatchlings. Once they hatch, they have only a certain amount of time to make it to the ocean to survive. Um, but with these large mats of sargassum, it's hard for the turtles to get there. And by the time they get there, you know, a predator might have snatched them up already. And also, once that sargassum just sits there and it starts to decay, it releases the smell of gas. And it smells like rotten eggs. It releases um, hydrogen sulfide and ammonia. And it's very unpleasant. It would affect tourism because not a lot of people would want to come to a beach with just sargasm on it. You know, it's it's an eyesore. Also, it's very expensive to clean up. And it, with that decaying sargasm, it promotes harmful algae blooms. These mats of sargasm, it creates dead zones, which is toxic to especially the marine creatures living there. It removes the oxygen out of the water and makes them unlivable. Um, so they would struggle for survival. But what are the causes of this? Why is there so many big sargasm blooms and why are they washing up on coastal communities? So it could be a lot of contributing factors that can cause this from happening. Um, waters are over nutrified. So let's say if it's wastewater, agricultural runoff, anything like that, it would just promote the growth of sargasm and it just makes it boom their population at that point. Also climate change. So the change in the water temperatures, the change in the currents, it would just cause them to wash up on the shores. And it just affects the ocean chemistry and affects the distribution and the growth of it. Also with the over, um, over nutrified waters, the runoff from the Amazon rainforest over in South America, as you can see by this map, you can see the um, Great Atlantic Sargasm Belt. And that's pretty much a big mat of sargasm just floating from the west coast of Africa. And it could eventually hit, it does eventually hit the states, Mexico, and all the islands. So with the Amazon rainforest, that runoff is just breeding into it. And then even the Saharan dust clouds. Um, once that wind pushes all that um, sand and it just eventually grows all this sargasm and that's how we get that sargasm sea as you can see from that bottom um, photo. Um, the bigger photo on
your left is the Amazon rainforest. Um, it just shows the runoff. Um, below, you can see that map and just all those contribu contributing factors and how it affects it pretty much. And this is just a little photo of the Great Atlantic Sargasm Belt, pretty much. As you'll see from the west coast of Africa, Africa, that's all just sargasm seaweed just stretching across the Atlantic Ocean. And it could be meters long and meters deep, and it would just float here eventually. And it causes problems to not just humans, but to the animals as well. And that was my presentation. And if you have any other questions on sargasm, it is such a complex topic. And there's so many different factors to include when we're talking about sargasm. Definitely feel free to contact me at my email listed below and my Instagram. You can always shoot me a DM. But that is all for today. Um, thank you for watching. And to follow up with BIMS, make sure you just follow, like, and subscribe. All the links are here shown. Um, thank you, and I hope everyone has a nice day.